That's too much. <laughs> <laughs> I'm happy to be with you today. Uh, are you hearing me? Yes. Okay. Um, and I thank you, Selim, for this opportunity. Uh, I, I have a weak spot for uh, ambitious young generations that have chosen to go for learning entrepreneurship. Uh, I know entrepreneurship is a new, a new teaching. Uh, in England, in the best universities, it has become uh, even a very attractive thing uh, 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 to, to follow. I have a nephew who is uh, uh, studying in London entrepreneurship. Then I have a problem with that. What is my problem? In my experience, I will start with my experience. In my experience, uh, I was born and bred for everything except business, making money, entrepreneurship. Uh, I, I, I was born from a father uh, uh, Nedde related and engaged, a mother uh, uh, close to Sheikh Bashar al Khouri. And that means where Lebanon was divided when I was born between these two uh, political families that were two political parties from all communities, which is very important. In everyone, al kitl al al-Kitl al-Distori, we were Lebanese from, uh, and all the leaders and sons of leaders you have heard of today, who are not a product of the militias, uh, uh, were either in uh, al-Kitl al-Distori or Al-Kitli Bloc National, or the, the Destour Bloc. I went to law only because I wanted to do politics. That made me uh, uh, hate both. First, I discovered that in politics as well as in uh, lawyer lawyering, you can be the most dishonest man on earth. And uh, I was uh, bred to, to, to be a man of integrity because uh, that what preserve your persona, that what preserve your self-esteem, and that what will save you in the worst of times when you feel uh, uh, down uh, or uh, uh, where uh, the conditions have put you down. In law, I was also, it was so easy for me, but I realized rapidly uh, that first I should rely on myself. That means I went teaching uh, whatever I found uh, an opportunity to teach. And, and that made, made me, uh, 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 I think, have my first experience in human connection. I did teach at the same time, simultaneously, kids in that day. Uh, up to the age of 12, uh, in a school in Jbeil, uh, at, uh, up to the age of uh, 16, 17, and at Louisi at the same time, to be able at the same time to finance my nightlife in addition to my university. Uh, I will be the passionate person of everything beautiful and enjoying life and loving life. It helped me later on, but you know. Uh, then, uh, when I uh, became a lawyer, now one thing which is important, first I am very, very glad to be in this place because I wanted to do my uh, science économique in English in the uh, uh, American, with NAUB. First because NAUB was, had a beautiful campus, nice environment, gorgeous girls, you know, at this age, as at my age, you, you have that, uh, you know, that's what makes you happy, to be in a nice environment. Uh, plus, I felt, at that time, we were talking about the 50s, that uh, uh, English is the international language. At that time in Europe, where they were talking about uh, inventing for the Europeans, a, a common language. 
uh, Esperanto or something like this. It was ridiculous. They would have to go back either to Latin, that is the mother of all Western languages, or to go to the language that has dominated the world, which is the English, English, American English, whatever English, Lebanese English, whatever English. And then I was stopped by my family. I said, no, how can you? Uh, go to, uh, you know, we are uh, Franco-Arab Catholic Maronites. Oof. Horrible. You know, while politically we were not that, as I explained, we, we were in political parties from all denominations. Uh, you can't go to the Protestants. That will be a shame for the family. That will be a problem for you in the future. To be honest with you, in, for, for different reasons, in many other opportunities for people from the Maronite community who were accused to be in any way uh, uh, anglophobe, anglophone, or uh, 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 anglo anglophile, or Protestants, while they were Maronites, it was a handicap for them to be elected. I will not mention the names. But one of the big names who, who, who died uh, 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 at the beginning of his uh, career as a successful businessman, Emil Bustani, had that problem. He was accused to be Protestant only because he, he would. Uh, okay, how can you, from a low business that you came in because you want to do politics with it, do anything? First, I couldn't bill anyone. Uh, thank to uh, uh, an advice of uh, one of the greatest leaders uh, of uh, the history of this, modern history of this country, Raymond Eddé, I, I, I was advised not to be doing my stage in his office, but in, the, in another office of him and his brother, that was Batonier Faiz Haddad office. Because if he told me, if you stay in my office, you will spend your time doing servicing politics, and you would not really learn the, pro the profession in every field. And Faiz Haddad was very well known as uh, a, a, a business lawyer, a uh, 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 trial lawyer, uh, had a great intellect. And I, I really learned with him only by watching him how, how we would take a very complex case and simplify it to the extent that in a few words he would convince, instead of going the other style, the old fashioned style, that making magnificent literary speeches uh, that we learned from the French education. I had the first opportunity in business, or to be in touch in business, when an, an embassy in Beirut, because they heard that I was uh, doing good, and so that, uh, I would advise their prime minister, Aldo Moro at the time, for a contract to be negotiated with Saudi Arabia. It was something I was not prepared for. Uh, but I am of the kind, and this is one of the quality of being an entrepreneur, that if I sit with someone, I project uh, a, an image, or I convince him that first I am in control of, the, of my subject, second that I can do, that he can uh, trust the strengths of my mind, if he can't trust the strengths of my uh, know-how, because I was already uh, young, and I was not even yet avocat à la cour. I, I was still a stagiaire. My advice was, was so good, but my entrepreneurial approach was not very good. You know, I asked for a fee for a lawyer. I could have made probably $300 million with a deal. I made $50,000 with the deal, which is great at that time. But, you know, but I was not, a, I did not have the mind for money, for making money. When I met my wife, Alice, 
And she came to take a look at my office and how I operate in my office. She was surprised. There was no billing system in my office whatsoever. None of my clients would ever be asked to pay anything except if he decides to do it. That is the old-fashioned way of doing things where you have a certain mepri, a certain neglect to, 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 to money, to making money, to commerce, to what have you. I mean, anything I am today, uh, 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 it, I, I couldn't have been without walking through it experience after experience. Uh, regret after regret. Uh, failure after failure. I, I was in Saudi Arabia. I got a contract in a serious competition for doing the University of Riyadh, one of the major projects at the time, $8 billion. We had as a, a subcontractor uh, a, 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 for, for all things technical, uh, John Deal from California, and he had working for him uh, a guy uh, who was working part-time for him, part-time for himself in his garage. It was Bill Gates. One day he came to me and said, Roger, would you for three million dollars have 25 percent of a startup that is a real good company? Uh, and it's, uh, it's called Microsoft, asked the question, how about you know, what they do? Do they do computer? You know, do they do something? They, no, they, they write programs for computer. But at the time, computers were already something important in the new tech business. Uh, he said, they will only write the programs for computer, but it has a tremendous potential. Uh, I was not prepared to understand the value of the offer. And I declined the offer. Before declining it, I would have had, for $3 million, 25% of Microsoft. For, this, is, this is why, you know, I would have had the courses you, have, you receive in the field of entrepreneurship uh, I wouldn't have been so stupid on that issue. Let me tell you about another stupidity. Later on, I am in Washington, very well known already, successful, have, knowing everyone who is anyone influential in politics right and left. And the, the uh, campaign manager of President Bush's uh, father, uh, uh, George Hawker Bush, uh, who was in Carlisle. Carlisle was a group which is now the biggest in the world uh, uh, managing uh, so-called offset funds. Uh, that's, I will explain if there is a question about it, how it happened, but it is the number one in the world. Prime ministers, when they leave office, like John Major, who work for them only to promote them here and there. Uh, and that friend uh, offers me only for the signature without any investment, only for my name, reputation, signature, the whole group of Marriott's. Oh, I am not in this business, hotel business, I have no idea about this, uh, you know. I declined it. Marriott is one of the most successful in Europe. I had also the opportunity to, that I was offered to uh, Walid bin Talal, Citicorp for uh, um, uh, $50 million to be put only on escrow account, no more. But it was a company known to go, going soon bust, and I declined. It was a mistake. Uh, uh, Walid bin Talal did not decline because he can cook, go always to his, uh, any one of his uncles, if not because he was not in good relation with his father at the time, and still not. And survive and get another deal. I couldn't afford that. I, I, I could afford it financially to invest, but not to, 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 to invest this kind of money in a, in a company going bankrupt. Another failure? Well, there's plenty of these. Uh, <laughs> I, 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 I was offered uh, a 
piece of land outside of Houston uh, by a Lebanese American who came to see me in Paris and asked me if I would, uh, uh, I would have some friend, you know, this is the way they offer it. We have a large piece of land, it's a marshland. I am prepared to sell it for $25 million. And, and I, I know that one day it will have the value. A few months later, we were in uh, the States. Uh, we, have all, we had offices also in uh, Houston, uh, Texas. Uh, I went with my friends, the architect of HOK, one of the leading now company in the world. When I started to get involved with HOK, it was 45 architects and uh, close to go bankrupt because it was the crisis of 74, 75. Uh, 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 I managed to uh, not only uh, al allow them to be successful and to get major contracts uh, and to become leaders in airports, in new cities, in uh, sport facilities, in every field you can think of. They, are, they have 2,600 architects today. And I am really proud of you know, that effort. And that may be the best lesson of about entrepreneurship, character, and uh, 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 to be also very careful not to mix between being a successful entrepreneur and a good manager. I think there is even a contradiction in, between the two personalities. Uh, the secret in HOK was that they were in HOK an entrepreneur. It was Mr. H. George Hermes, his nephew today is the president of HOK. The, another man was the genius, Obata, like Pei Gio Obata, was uh, an American for a 25th generation of uh, artists in every field, Japanese Americans and others who are still in Japan. You can't go to, uh, to any museum without finding something from Obata's. And Gio Bata, you know, when you are a genius, you have a huge ego because it flies. When you are a businessman and you have success in business, you have a huge ego. Thank God they were a manager in this organization, someone from a major company called Monsanto in St. Louis, Missouri, because the headquarter was in St. Louis, Missouri, uh, named Casabon. Uh, 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 and Casabon was like another assistant I had in, uh, uh, in Switzerland. Her name carries everything, Regula. You know, all the contrary of craziness. Uh, the step by step you walk into your career choice. Uh, even if you have the wealth to invest, if you, are, if you don't feel that you are prepared for something with a vision, with an idea, and knowing that you will get bored if you are a true entrepreneur, you don't like to manage things. You don't like to have hands on in every details. Uh, if you do that, you become abusive, impossible, and you may make major mistakes that can hurt your company. Uh, uh, you know, people say success breeds success. It's true because it gives you credibility to go for another success story. It gives you self-confidence. It allows people to come and invest with you for any business you want to do. But uh, 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 I think the quality required to be a successful entrepreneur are not the qualities required to be a good manager. A good entrepreneur is the one who understands that he needs the best management and a manager he would trust. But a manager that has also the possibility to pick people in the organization that in whatever job they have, they can be inventive, creative, and many entrepreneur. That means when you have a responsibility to do this in that field, in, that, in this project, like, you know, this one, whatever. You have always to think, 
not only to be rigorous, meticulous, not only to be uh, a morning miracle person. You know, I am not a morning miracle person. You can be successful by being a night miracle success person. It's, uh, it depends, uh, you know, if you are a morning <laughs> miracle. Uh, you can be a huge success, uh, you know, like Bezos and, uh, and others. They are all people who at four, five o'clock in the morning, they are up, at 10 o'clock, they're dead. Uh, <laughs> but there is no time for entrepreneurs. Time is everything for managers. Because managers, they have to pay attention to every detail, to be on the top of every decision made, to watch for everything. And in management, responsibility and sense of respons responsibility is the most important thing. Uh, because if you are a manager, you are responsible. If you are an entrepreneur, you're not responsible, you're crazy. And you are supposed to be crazy. Uh, 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 and it's true, you know, you know there, is, there were a, a, a publicity by Apple that uh, 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 people think that uh, uh, crazy people can change the world. And that's true. Uh, crazy people do change the world. Otherwise, they go crazy, <laughs> fully crazy, which is great, you know, because they will be uh, sitting in whatever uh, dream they are living in. Uh, when you were introducing me, uh, Sammy, to, about uh, dreaming of the impossible, GFK, dreaming of the impossible, dream of the, um, the impossible, and say, why not? That's crazy. But then he got to the moon with that crazy idea. Then he, uh, 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 he had the courage to bring down taxes while he is from a political party that raises taxes, that raises spending, because he was a Democrat. He was from the left side of the... But now he is considered as a reference with Ronald Reagan of having brought growth through bringing down taxes. The, the environment for entrepreneurship is important. Uh, you hear here, there will be tomorrow the rebuilding of Syria, the rebuilding of Iraq, the rebuilding of this, of that. Uh, our banks rush to every country uh, in the region and lost money in every country in the, in, in the region without making the risk assessment of the politics of an environment that can go bust because fundamentally it's a dictatorship that cannot survive forever. And even if you associate with those dictators, clan, family, uh, cronies, you can make money, dirty money. And, but you know, dirty money always shines somewhere. Uh, 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 and, and then you cut and leave. If you can, but banks are not made for fly-by-night deals. Banks are made to be in a place and to build a, 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 a roots and to build clientele, and to build for the future of, of helping the development of a place. And then you found out with a totally collapsed and totally burned out uh, 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 Syria. Uh, Iraq, one of the richest countries. Uh, Iran. Show me many entrepreneurs who really now dreams of, uh, that is one of the richest countries in the Middle East dream of building something in Iran? My answer will be, they are even stupid, or they are selling them something. Like when you are, for example, a Renault, you are a, 
uh, a Peugeot car, and nobody is buying your cars in France, and you want some, you go somewhere and help them, and help them assemble some cars. That's not an investment. That's an escape. Uh, with the support of your own government and you think the protection of your government. But if you want to sell Airbus, you can sell Airbus. Even if you have a deal, if the, sanction, if, if, if the president of America is sanctioning uh, Iran or the Revolutionary Guards of Iran, France can visit Iran, the President Macron can visit. He would have the best possible relationship with the Iranians because they are very, very welcoming people. They are very nice people. Uh, they know how to engage and how to convince you. Uh, uh, great. But when you come back and you check if you can buy anything, even you, if you can sell anything, even spare parts, you can sell spare parts. This is why Iran, during the sanction period, used to, and probably they are to a certain extent today, uh, uh, cannibalize uh, uh, airplanes to only maintain few airplanes to fly. It means what? It means there is a catch-up, what I call a catch-up opportunity to invest in a country that has to be rebuilt. Iran would have to be rebuilt one day. Syria will, would be rebuilt. Iraq definitely earlier will be probably rebuilt. But, and, and there is always this catch-up opportunity there. But as long as while you are catching up in that opportunity, you don't have an eye about what's going on in politics of those countries you better uh, sell as soon as possible whatever you do and you make as a success. Otherwise, you are taking a big risk. The right environment for investment remains an environment of political stability, democracy, uh, 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 of uh, the minimum re regulations uh, and rules, by which governments commit themselves. I am not for uh, accumulating regulations, because what happens with that is that it became a handicap for any investment, for any development. Regulations are necessary, but regulations have to be uh, the result of an experience of a country with a, uh, with a many business attempts and political attempts dealing with business, then you correct uh, and you say, okay, we have, to, we have to put frameworks here, we have to put frameworks there. But what happens normally is that everyone who, is, who come to parliament, who come to government, everyone who is in a commission that, des that decide of anything, come on, and borrow an idea because he wants to to demonstrate that he is not he's smart, he knows, he understands, and he will put a new regulation without taking in consideration or having any idea, any clue about what the regulation will cost the economy and how many of the people who are invested in this economy can be uh, uh, pushed out of the market and pushed out of the country. Uh, how many would be attracted if they see these uh, accumulation of regulations. Uh, when we say minimum government is important, sure minimum government is important, as long as minimum government is ethical government, is wise government, is government for all the people, is government that can provide justice, it can provide legal justice and social justice and stability. The, the idea of redistribution, you see like in America, the idea of redistribution, any candidate who will run on redistribution will go bust in America. But the, America spent its time and its money uh, for now at least 100 years, uh, for the whole 20th century, in redistribution. But if you say redistribution, panics. If you say it in the Middle East or in Lebanon, what kind of redistribution? You take it from the Christians to give it to the Shia, from the Sassoni to give it to the Druze? Or the Druze. What, kind, what kind of redistribution? As long as in this country we are not liberated from uh, our real, real 
uh, incurable cancer. That is the confessional system. As long as we are citizens of a community or another community, we have no chance to become citizen and to have a country that is, on the longer term, we're, uh, uh, able to have a sustainable democracy. And to have, on the longer term, a, 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 a people that will invest their families, their kids, when they go to school, that they will have their future in their country, not elsewhere. Not a country that is in a permanent de facto civil war, even called civil war or real civil war. And the solution is not so difficult. It's even, it does the, every, every, every revolution requires a change. But here the change is already in the, uh, seeded in the Constitution and in whatever uh, uh, deal we have made, uh, or it was made on us in Taif, made on us in between. Uh, Give me. There are two principles that have been agreed on. That at a certain point we need to constitute a commission that will work on abolishing political confessionalism. Because nobody wants to abolish whoever in confessions or people who believe in anything or denominations of any kind. That means in the constitution you have that window of opportunities to abolish, to work for abolition. And then you have on the other side, another requirement is decentralization. Because the system in Lebanon has been conceived uh, copying the French of the Third Republic, uh, uh, which did, in fact, what was a postmodern uh, 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 monarchy. It was the only difference that the monarch is elected. Uh, we then had that situation of a very centralized system. And anyone think that this centralization is good for a country. But they all cheat with decentralization. Because when you have the power, when you have a political party that is in power, or a group of political parties that are in power, they go for decentralization. And whatever they give you in the right hand, they will take it on the left hand. No. For a country like Lebanon, and as I think that solution will be good for Syria, for Iraq, and for many countries in, in, in the third world and in the Arab world, you go for a grand bargain. We give up, definitely, confessionalism, and we go for a federation or a confederation of regions, of muhafazat. A regional. Why I say regional? Because if you don't make it regional, then we fall into the trap that we are in today. We are, in fact, a federation today of confessions. If I am an, a businessman, I have to. Uh, you, know, you see, I had the opportunity in the 80s. I, I, I even, you know, they insisted with me to have first to have my own license of banks for a bank. Second, to have the Credit Suisse, when the Credit Suisse was up to offer only with what I had in the bank, without having to pay anything more. Uh, I declined both. Why? Because I was afraid that any political position I may make, any decision I may make politically, can hurt the bank. And I hurt the bank, hurt the clients, when you have governments that are not truly democratic, that are not truly respectful of the rules of law, that are not truly respectful of the rules of how you can welcome investment and keep investment and encourage, create the environment for successful entrepreneurship, you have a problem. And that's something that we have to deal with as activists, because we are activists for the causes, for many causes of liberty, causes of, for, the, for, for women equal rights, causes for but, uh, environment. But one of the causes we, uh, we, I don't know of any NGOs that has the cause of 
creating the environment for, for good uh, 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 entrepreneurship, creating an environment that attracts investments. While we see people this week, yesterday, no, before yesterday, here you have the, uh, 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 the, the Saudi starting a $500 billion uh, uh, seed money fund uh, for uh, Yom projects uh, that involve at the same time Jordan and Egypt that is in a very highly strategic place on the uh, 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 by air or by sea. Uh, Five hundred billion dollar means it translates in terms of projects to give you an idea. A project needs as capital uh, investment on equity between 10 to 25 percent depending of the credibility of the project or of the country of the sovereign guarantee. 10 to 25 percent. And in the case of the Saudi, and when you have $500 million, 10% is good enough. Uh, first, they hired a manager, one of the best people of Siemens, a CEO of Siemens, who just retired, was hired. That means a top-notch manager. Uh, uh, Klaus uh, something. Gladfeld. Uh, Gladfeld. German names are not familiar to me. Uh, that's important because that means here they are making it professional. They're not hiring a cousin or someone from a family from the Hejaz to please so and so. Uh, they will be attracting investment, and that investment means what? You, you will have equity. If they invest themselves in equity, 10% of the 10%, they can have a project if it is $100 million. The project will go to one billion dollar, hundred million. Very easy, very easy. If you want to do a power plant, twenty-five percent. It's very important to have as equity because in, for a power plant you need a good management. Here, see, in 1994, I have offered in a speech in uh, for the World Bank in in Athens and uh, at the IFC, I offered to provide Lebanon with twice its capacity in electricity uh, for six cents and a half. It wasn't it wasn't the media after and the press. After. Nobody paid any attention here to that. Why? Because people who think that they can't get from the private sector the commission they would get if they are only buying a plant and controlling the fueling of the, of the plant and the replacement, that means corruption, nothing else. Corruption hates private sector because they, they can get something from the private sector by blackmailing the private sector at a certain level or another level. But they don't get to become billionaires. And I don't know, and you know that people who never worked for anything except to become billionaire from government. Uh, I don't need to name anybody. Uh, or to, to make innocence of anybody, I don't know. I have no idea. People say. But here in Lebanon, the billions of dollars we have spent since 94, without at any time having what we need which was 3,000 megawatt. I was offering the double. Why I was offering the double? I was stupid. I had with me Sumitomo Bank. I had with me Chase. You know, I knew very well what I was doing. I was already doing projects in, in, in different parts of the world in that field, funding to the private sector, public infrastructure. Uh, and this is why I was invited to have to, to, have to do the uh, keynote speech on that subject. Uh, the, every kilowatt, and these are studies made, or we are talking about 94, not today. Today it will be more interesting. Every kilowatt, kilowatt you can offer to the private industry at interesting price. That is not the stealing price we get. Uh, produces 
three dollars of export. That means with the 60 cents, I was having the cost of a kilowatt sold. They, by the way, I was making money. That means in, in every, uh, uh, at every 400 uh, uh, megawatt, I would do in uh, the seven or 10 years X amount of money. If I go into the, with my shares into the stock market, it will be multiplied by five, by seven, by 10. In India, by 17. By 17. The Modi's in India made a, 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 a project of a, a refinery as a private business. And then before starting anything in the refinery, they sent their projects to uh, uh, the stock market. It was multiplied by 17. After that, the government had to put pressure on them because they were making more money in the stock market than by building the refinery in Mangalore. Uh, I, I don't want to go too far. I, you know, I promise you not to go too far into my presentation to, 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 to open up for question and answers. But uh, uh, definitely, uh, to be an entrepreneur is a trait of character. It doesn't need much talent. It doesn't need much uh, 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 genius. It needs a character that thinks, a character that seizes opportunities, that is curious, and that is daring. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you very much, Mr. Ridde, for this very enlightening speech. So I will not be long to keep some time for the Q&A, but I want to um, talk to my students who are taking the course with me right now. So the, Mr. Ridde went through four different topics of what we are actually discussing in class and stuff I am insisting on, which is, the SWOT analysis, so as he said, you analyze the project, the strengths, the weaknesses, the opportunities, and the threats of each project. The PEST analysis, you analyze the environment, whether it's political environment, economical environment, everything related to the environment of your project. The third thing, you have to be crazy. You cannot be normal or mainstream and be an entrepreneur. You have to go this extra step that other people do not dare to take. You have to dream, dream big. And if you want to take the project management class with me next term, project management is management. This does not mean that you will be a successful leader. You have to be a very successful manager, but leadership takes skills that management does not teach you. So leadership is not something you will learn here at the UB. Leadership is something you will learn in your everyday life. You will learn from your failures. Mr. Idde went through some of his failures. He never gave up, and he always looked a little bit further than that, and this is why he is who he is today. So now we have the Q&A uh, session. We have two microphones, one with me and one with Carla up there. If you want to ask any question, you just raise your hand. I'll give you the microphone, and you can talk directly to Mr. Idde. Thank you. Questions, guys? Shoot. Make my day. Uh, hi, sir. How are you? Yes. Uh, right. My question is, uh, now, the, uh, our Lebanese economy, we know political instability and everything. You know, it's not very well. Our economy isn't growing the rate that we always expect. So my question is, weren't you scared when you had investment opportunities over here in Lebanon? Were you scared to, I know, what factors would you consider, think, do before investing in a certain project? Let me be honest with you. No, today, if I, uh, if, if I am thinking as a businessman, an investor, I would uh, stay away and wait for better days. Reason? Very simple. Uh, I don't, I am not convinced that the people that are running this country understand economics. And I, I won't, I would not exclude anyone, even the one who 
who, who get prices of being genius in creative finance, okay? Uh, and, he, and the one who understand, uh, they may be doing some politics because for different reasons, but not for uh, changing the economy. I, don't, I haven't seen anyone who understands business, who understands economics, run on economics. Uh, take the example of uh, uh, Prime Minister uh, uh, Mikati, who is a success story with his brother Taha, who are friends of mine, in the sector. Uh, I did not hear at any time, even in a national campaign or a regional campaign, except, except for last week in Tripoli, because they lost an election in the municipality and they are afraid they won't be in the parliament or not be really relevant in the parliament because of the proportional system, they start to speak about development in Tripoli and to hire a person to work on the development in Tripoli. The issue of uh, creating the right environment, first economically, is important. Now uh, we have uh, uh, a pile of taxations, and the most taxing is what is, not, what is not done in the country. I spoke about electricity, you can speak about roads, about the traffic. One of the biggest handicaps of this project today is not the war with Israel or it's not Hezbollah, it is the traffic between Beirut and Biblos. The same applies to every business. The same applies to every citizen in his own budget. Uh, the, the need to spend your, you know, you are spending your nerves on the roads, you are spending your time, on the, and time is of big value on the roads. Uh, uh, tourism, one of the major industries in any economy, any economy in the world. Regional economies, and I will take name by name every place. Yesterday we were hearing about Singapore. Uh, we are hearing about, uh, we don't, I don't want to compare with a too big economy. Let's compare with Croatia, a yesterday economy. A country that has just has been liberated after the fall of the Soviet Union. A country with only four million people, like Lebanon. Uh, it has beautiful places like we have. Uh, uh, seven million tourists in Croatia last year. 11 billion euros of entrance of hard currencies, direct entrance. Because when you are in tourism business, you have to multiply it by five because of the consumption of that industry in every different field. Okay. Uh, no, I would not do it. And by the way, when I came back to Lebanon after a period of exile, of self-exile, self-chosen exile, uh, which helped me, by the way, uh, to really develop uh, my practice into uh, business investment, uh, even my law office into the international law office, uh, to, uh, to be able to be so much in the decision-making process in America and elsewhere that I, I predicted the fall of the Soviet Union and, and of the uh, Berlin Wall, and I was able to buy 64 pieces of land and to set up an office in Berlin uh, a year before the fall of the wall and to develop it after, you know. I, when I came back to Lebanon, it was in, I started to come back in 78. Uh, I had the word that, okay, they won't kill me, but uh, as long as I don't go in uh, public speeches or in uh, talk shows. I started to have the ambition, and I had prepared already in, 70, in 1977, the, uh, 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 the uh, Lebanese Silicon Valley. It was at the same time we were working on a project similar in Bangalore, India. Today, Bangalore, India, Silicon Valley, is competing and is a major investor in Silicon Valley itself. Today, at the time in Israel, there were 
at the stage of privatizing their public banks because all their banks were, were public. They did not have a real private uh, uh, enterprise economy, neither an attractive one. Now, one of the major net income of the Israeli economy comes not from agriculture, which was, uh, as a technology, a, a good one, or from military, or from health. It comes from the new tech. And you don't know for what you're using on the, your, your telephone or your computer uh, 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 and what software is coming from because you know, we are in a really, truly globalized world. And uh, I had my project, I spent $7 million on the project. I had it also multimedia at the same time. I wanted to have a multimedia because I, I, I realized that we, we have a demand for, uh, you know, like CNN and blah 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 to be to have to be based in the Middle East way before it went. In fact, the project in Dubai, that is the project I have sent to Sheikh Mohammed Al Maktoum, was the engineer after I received a, 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 a message from a Lebanese friend who was really enthusiastic about supporting me. And by the way, the Lebanese government, I was in opposition. From the president to the prime minister of the time, to every member of cabinet interested, everyone tried to help. MIT has sent me from its side its angels for investing in that project. The project would have been a real village uh, uh, between uh, Biblos and Marsharbel. Uh, I had already acquired the land and prepared the planning for it. And it would have been a real success story. It would have made for Lebanon the equivalent of what today Lebanon internal product is. The equivalent. Okay. They said, no. Hey, the internet city, Namil Habishar. And that was the message that ended it. Next day, the engineer left. It was at the time in the media, it was the social media. Every, every responsible from every country in the Middle East, from Jordan, from uh, Egypt, from Tunis, even from Damascus, uh, a minister of health and his wife, because he was American educated, came to see me to try to understand what we are doing. Because I tried also to explain it that that is something not for Lebanon. It is something that is for the region. The place is in Lebanon. It had its own laws, which you have now in the free zone in, uh, uh, in Dubai. I wrote those laws. Personally, at least, you know, this is why, how lawyering can help when you are in business and you are a lawyer. Uh, the, uh, today, uh, then when I was, you know, uh, blocked by that, I said, okay, let's do something that is labor intensive. And hospitality is labor intensive. Second, I thought that uh, 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 hospitality is something, if you educate people in hospitality, they can have the opportunity to work in every place in the world. Some, Sometimes they are attracted because their families uh, are, you know, they have a diplomatic or a business elsewhere. They have, they move with their families to different places. Hospitality is a moving thing. Uh, and uh, uh, hospitality feeds every uh, 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 production of services and industries and agriculture. And quality of all of this makes a difference. And more and more today, the quality of whatever you get as food becomes so important that now, you know, uh, Ed Sands sends to the laboratory in this university uh, in this hospital university or laboratory to check on al if it, if, if it, if, if it is uh, 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 polluted or not. al everything, every fish, everything. And to the extent that now we are, we will have our own, this, for, this, for this summer, we'll have our own laboratory in our own projects. Because people, understands today that the quality of what you eat is as important for uh, you, you, your life, for, uh, for your health, for the quality of your life and your health and your kids than uh, 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 whatever you breathe. Uh, 
That was a decision made with one consideration, what I can do for my country, because my business is still abroad. I have business everywhere. One of my major projects today is a new cities in Buenos Aires, 550,000 square meter, in mid, mid place between, between the center of the city and the airport. That's an opportunity investment, for example. Why is it an opportunity investment? Because Buenos Aires needs to catch up. They are getting out of Peronism, national socialist, Peronism into a more free enterprise society. Already from last year to this year, in one building, 46-7% hike in the uh, 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 renting cost, huge, or, 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 or value, or what have you. Uh, but the first thing I did, first I made the whole project green canals between the places, uh, six to seven small lakes, all natural. It's not like the canal in, um, in, 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 in Venice. That means on the side, instead of making, putting a wall, you lose some space and you plant plants that clean the water, allow the fish to survive in the water and people to enjoy the place. And at the same time, uh, 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 become a spectacle with, uh, 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 with colors that at every month of the year. This is what we did in a, in a the sense that we did in our house garden in, in Ede. You can go any month of the year and have whatever. They are different, but they are always there. The same goes for fruits. But the first deal I made was with a school. In, in Argentina, I, I discovered that the best and most prestigious school is an, a, 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 an Italian school and university. We made a deal with the school of the, and the university, and the first design we are working on, we have, we have already you know, the place and everything, but uh, the master plan, uh, and you can take a look at it if you look at our Facebook or uh, uh, on my social media, I am very active on social media. And you can have an idea about it. The second is an hotel when you, can, uh, 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 when you can buy a room or a suite in the hotel. And when you use it, you use it. When you don't use it, it is rented and you, it is shared uh, a medicine formula. But that's nothing. It's a whole city that when the project will, be, will end, will be at least a $2 billion project, at least a $2 billion project. But most important, it will be a project like no one else in Latin America. It will be a flag project. That is the idea. You have to be the leader in every field and to think to remain the leader. In the case of uh, uh, Lebanon. Uh, to be honest with you, I am only keeping planning for Edis Snow in uh, uh, like Edis Sands, Edis Snow in Ala uh, Alu. It will be a city, uh, uh, really uh, a lighting city on the hill. Uh, the model is more. Uh, a postmodern model of Stadt uh, 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 or uh, 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 another beautiful place I, I love that is similar in, uh, in Switzerland. The, uh, uh, and I may be tempted also by the color city made in somewhere in Canada. I am between the three concepts because these are the real model. Always, Taste, taste change. I am st also working on uh, a uh, green village that is uh, not where Marsharbel you have, in a hill, in a complete hill, a village that has not been inhabited or uh, anything planted in it for at least 200 years. That means I can do it all in bio and create an environment that can be also attractive. The key always is to go for something. Now, do I make money in this sense? No. 
Do I invest money in EdSense every year? Yes. Do I lose money in EdSense every year? Yes. I pay three times more taxes than uh, 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 any profit that I never see? Yes. That's no good. That's no good. Uh, but my projection for EdSense development is at least, at least 20 to 30 times EdSense. And I have the land for it, I, am the, I have the planning, it will be all a, 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 like a green hill with a terrace. That means if you are coming from the sea or you are in the project, you won't see except Jlali, the, the famous Jalli Lebnani. But in fact, it will be a total multi-purpose uh, complex of hotels, Apartments, uh, uh, malls, uh, uh, offices, uh, and uh, other, other, other leisure activities, etc. But would I do that now? No way. With this kind of environment, no way. And if you're planning, uh, uh, let me tell you one thing. If you're planning for careers, uh, I will advise you to look elsewhere. Because the closing of companies only in the last two years is equivalent, closing and bankruptcies, is equivalent to the whole period since the beginning of the Lebanese War, 75, 76. It's an absolute shame, and no one wants to see it. They know it. Because, by the way, as we, I am with you, in every dinner, when I sit with those bozos, uh, 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 you know, I speak as frankly and as honestly and even more aggressively. Thank you, Mr. Adil.